It's over, went over to the hospital point over there. Nevada. The Nevada. She came in. I could just see her. By, she was coming about 10, minute, 10 knots real fast and um, went right by us. And I, I was standing on the back of the ship there. And uh, it went by so fast. She went right by the uh, Arizona. Uh, she had lean, leaning flat in the water, 45 degrees. And when, when the Nevada went by, the backwash from that hit the ship on the other side of the Nevada and just turned the Arizona upside down. And men were just climbing up on the side of the ship to get on the bottom of the ship. And they were all a fire because the oil was down there. So I said, well, I've got a, a number of men under number four to it. I wanted to get them off of there. I told him I would get them off. He said, we can't. We've got to go over to the era, era, to the uh, Arizona, yeah, to the Arizona and picked them up. So we went over there and they were all full of oil and burnt. And we loaded them in there and we took them over to the 1010 dock. And um, there was a bunch of nurses and doctors up there receiving them. And I said, I'm not going to go to back. I want to go back to the West Virginia. And I said, you're going to take this ship back there and get them. So on the way back, we passed the um, a captain's gig. It was all white. Actually, it was an admiral's gig, but it, it belonged to the skipper of the West Virginia. And I says, give me somebody to run that diesel engine there. And we've got two boats, and we'll go over and help the Arizona get those men. I'll get my men off the West Virginia. So on the way over there, a bomb hit right in the, into the... Uh, the ship astern of us, that was the Arizona. And uh, it, 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 it hit about a 200 ton, tons of explosive in the number one turret. And the whole ship just raised up in the water and the forward mast just laid right forward. And just anybody topside was blown off. And my boat just about six foot in the air and just plopped in the deck and it was still running, so I started toward the air, West Virginia, and on the way over, there was some men swimming from the Arizona, so we picked them up, but there was a lot of dead men in there, we, we, we couldn't take them, so we got, got picked six men, and we took them to the West Virginia, and the boat was coming up, so I just put the bow of the gig up there on the, on the deck, told the men on the number four to get in here, and we got to get out of here. But we had too many men, and I had gone too far on the quarter deck. So I said, some of them get out and push me off so I get my screws in the water so we can get this ship, this launch, this little gig off the ship. So we did that, and then we went over to the Arizona, and we finished putting men on her. We had so many men, the water was coming over the gunnels. I says, I can't take any more men. I says, I'll put the lines out. You can hang on there. We're going to go over to the submarine base because the second attack had already started to coming. They were coming right in. Must have another, another 300 planes. And um, we were, the captain's gig was all white. I'm surprised they didn't shoot at us. But we just, I could just make two or three knots because the water kept coming over the stern. And I finally got them over to the sub base got them off and I was ready to go out again and um, there was a young ensign on there he told me West Virginia get back here I didn't give me permission to leave the dock so I brought the ship back in and I went over to him and I said what's the trouble he says I never gave you permission to leave the ship and you cannot be the coxswain of a captain's gig You're, you haven't got a hat on your uniform is black he says, you'll have to change clothes. I said, I haven't got time. This is a war. He says, I thought this was a drill. That's the most fantastic drill I ever seen. 
So I took him by the shoulder and I shook him and I says, I'm going to drop you in the drink and wake you up so you know what's going on around here. So he took out a gun and he says, you put me in the water, I'll shoot you. And I says, that's where you belong in there. I says, he said, I can't swim. I said, how did you ever get in the Navy? He said, somebody's a substitute for me. And I'm in the Navy. He was just a college graduate. He was still in college when they, they gave him an instance job. So I was really cussing him out. He says, you were in a report for insubordination. So he called the first class torpedo men over there and he said, take this man up to the chief master arms and he's on a report. So he took me up and chief said, what's the trouble? I says, uh, I kind of took that ensign and grabbed him by the collar and I was going to put him in the drink. I said, what do you want to do that for? Because he was, wasn't going to let me go back on my ship and pick the men out there. They were dying in the water. And he says, um, well, go back and take a shower and come back here and I'll give you a uniform and you can go back and take your ship over. So about that time I came back there, I did it in the clap zone. The water, blood was coming down my back. I had taken a shrapnel right through the back of my neck and it was stuck in there. So there was a pharmacist mate there, and he um, told the pharmacist mate, see if you can take care of this man. And he got his pair of tweezers and pulled out a piece of strap that was about as big as a 22 bullet and uh, put it on. He says, how do you feel? I, I feel kind of weak now. So he said, you think you'd go back out there? I said, well, put a patch on, or I'm going to go back down there. So he did, and I couldn't find a uniform that... He, he said, well, I'll give you a chief's uniform. No, I says, I'll get one. I'm not a chief. So I put on a second-class torpedo man's uniform, and he said, go down there. And I went down there. There was a lieutenant down there by then. And I said, where's my boat at? He said, we had to refuel it. There was, it would have run out of oil out there if it had gone out. And he says, what is your rate? I says, the third ship ship fitter. He says, uh, well, they want you at the receiving station down there. Uh, uh, commander, commander, uh, wants you down there. And we need somebody to go over to the Arizona, over to the, uh, it wasn't the Arizona. The ship that was upside down. So, uh, Oklahoma, Oklahoma. And so they took me to the Oklahoma. First, they had to go back to the West Virginia to get my cutting torch because the water was up to my waist. It was, the ship had sit on the bottom, but there was still water on the first deck. And I went and got my uh, cutting torch and got it, put it in the sea bag. I couldn't take the bottles. They were too heavy. They took me over to the Oklahoma and I climbed up around the screws, got on the deck, and there was another ensign up there. And I said, geez, I got another stupid ensign up here I've got to deal with. <laughs> he, he says, I want you to cut a hole here. I said, there's an oil tank here. I said, geez, how, how did these young ensigns ever get in the Navy anyway? They, they don't know nothing. So I said, uh, they have to be in a void or be in the engine rooms or boiler rooms. And I says, let's go b go back there. And we heard a tapping on the deck. I says, they're down here. They were, they were in a void down here. So I had to get my bottles coming from the ship next door. And they uh, hooked me up with a uh, settling and oxygen. And I started cutting a hole about w four inches in circle. The deck down there was about one inch oil thick. The steel on the bottoms are real heavy steel. So I had to ch change my tip because I didn't have a big enough tip and increase my pressure. And so I, I got got it in there and pretty soon the fish came up. And I, how many men down there? You got 10 men. Of course, when I put that air, that air came up through there so the water was rising down there fast. So I... I had told them to go to the board the next ship and bring, us, bring some 
blowers over here so we can get air down there so these people can breathe. So I told them to get out of there and I do, drew, cut a hole 20 inches in diameter. Took me about a half hour to do that. And uh, we started getting the men out of there. Boy, they were, they were really tired. And uh, so uh, by that time, the, the ship putters on the Raleigh came over and they were starting cutting holes too. So we cut holes all all afternoon. We got about a hundred men out of the out of out of those holes in boiler rooms. Fantastic. I can go on and on, but I know there's a lot more going. Yeah, we got some more people to talk here, but thank you very much. Okay. What an amazing story. Amazing.